mercy of Jesus Christ. Mercy of God. We don't deserve his mercy, but his mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I love the book of Lamentations. Have your Bibles, if you would, open to the book of 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel in the 22nd chapter. 2 Samuel 22 this morning. As we continue looking at our theme this year, Only God. Brand new year, 2021. And so far, it's been a doozy. Has it not? Now, some want to go back to 2020, but you can't, can you? Each day moving forward, I tend to live life that way in general. Some people are not geared that way. I guess uh, some people have called me an optimist. Usually it's shouted or said as a, uh, um, as a criticism by a realist. You met a realist in your life? They're a pessimist. They just want to call themselves something else. I'm not a pessimist. I'm a realist. I tend to be an optimist, I guess. 2021, we can be optimistic not because of what's around us, but who's over us. If our view on life, if our satisfaction in life, if our joy in life comes from our circumstances, then we will live a roller coaster life. There are some days that we'll be on top of the world. Some days our bank account will be full, life will be good, we'll have our health, our family, everything, and the next moment we'll be down at the bottom of the depths. If we live life based on what's around us, our life will be a roller coaster. I don't know about you, but I know about me and roller coasters, and J.D. Howell and roller coasters don't mix. I tend to lose my lunch on roller coasters. I don't know about you, but most people and the roller coaster of life don't mix. There are times that life is going well on top of the world, and boy, we're just ha happy we have the, the moon by the tail, and the next moment it seems like we are tossed and turned. If we learned nothing else from 2020, have we not seen, has it not been revealed that our God is in control and we are not? Or in the vernacular, we ain't in control. We can't so much as do anything. God can do everything. In this new, new year, in 2021, I was challenged this last year in my devotional walk and time with God that this year we'd focus on these two little words, only God. Only God is a position of authority in my life. Only God in a position of praise in my life. We looked at John 17, verse 3, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Jesus in Mark chapter 2 says this, Who can forgive sins but God only? And my friend, you may be here this morning, and your foundation may not be in Jesus Christ. But my friend, God Almighty, through His Son, Jesus Christ, has made a way of salvation. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And every day that I wake up saved is a wonderful day. And if you have never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can trust Him today. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Believe that Jesus Christ came to forgive sins. Believe that he died, was buried, and rose again. And by trusting him, that he will save you. The Bible says he will. And I believe it. The Bible is true. Now therefore, O Lord our God, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord, even thou only. Isaiah 37, verse 20. As a Christian... As a pastor, there are days, there are moments that I wish that God would just fully reveal himself. God could in a fraction of a second remove all doubt as to who he is and what he is capable of. We are in a world that doubts the existence of God, even though creation and everything around us tells us that there is something bigger than me out there. And God, in a fraction of a moment, in a fraction of a second, could remove all doubt. 
He could roll back the heavens. Our eyes could be opened. We could see him on the throne. And our response would not be, oh, look at that. It would be none else but to fall flat on our face in worship. One day he will. One day every knee will bow to Jesus Christ. One day everyone, past, present, future, will recognize and understand God himself. My encouragement to you, trust him on this side. Know him on this side. Believe him on this side. It was from Isaiah chapter 37. The psalmist in Psalm 62 verse 5 says this, My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. You know where I find my hope? You know where I find my confidence? It's not in Washington, D.C. It's not in my own two hands or my ability. My confidence, my hope, my strength must come from him. This morning, I can direct your attention to 2 Samuel chapter 22. So we look at one other aspect of only God and his singularity. Singular in position and singular in praise. But this morning, I'd encourage you to understand that God, and God alone, is singular in his power. Look in 2 Samuel 22, beginning in verse 31. As for God... Now just pause there briefly. If you were to read back a few verses, you'd find out that this is a praise from King David. Scripture has told us about David. He's a man after God's own heart. He was a man who God noticed and took notice of when he was a young man, still tending the sheep. Maybe 15 or years of age, maybe a little bit even younger than that. A man that God had anointed to be king and now this king, he has lived a life, full life. He's had battles, victories. He's made mistakes. David was not a perfect man. Yet David was a man who followed his God. Here, David is speaking about what God has done and how he has, has referenced, he's referencing the power of God, the deliverance of God, the ability for God. And he has talked about some people along the way and the afflictions and the enemies round about. Each day of our life, each aspect of our life, there will be, there will be things that oppose us. Sometimes it will be people. And no, it's not your wife, your husband sitting next to you. It's not your children in junior church. Sometimes there will be people that oppose what you do and what you believe. Sometimes it will be ideas or philosophy. Sometimes it will be yourself, your flesh. There will be opposition. But you know that our God is fully capable of delivering us from all of those things? Did you know that your God and my God has the power to do everything? Not just anything and anything he wants to do. Our God can do everything at the same time, in the same moment, and it would not tax him this much. God is that powerful. This verse says, as for God... He's been talking about some things, some deliverance, some other afflictions, some people, and now he focuses the attention back to God. But as for God, I like that little phrase, as for God, because sometimes as a parent, as a father, I've used a similar phrase. You sit there, you sit there, and as for you, as for you, let me now focus on on you. Principal for 12 years at Bridgeport Baptist Academy. Maybe one time in 12 years we have students that didn't do right. One time, maybe more than once, but I don't remember. 
use similar phrases. You, you, and as for you. David now directs our attention, focuses our sight on God. But as for God. And let's see what he says here in 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 31 to 33. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. For who is God save the Lord? And who is a rock save our God? God is my strength and power, and he maketh my way perfect. Lord, I thank you for this time. Lord, I'd ask that you would help us. During these next few moments, as we look at you, that our hearts would be stirred. Lord, that our spirits would be convicted. That our minds would be turned toward you. Lord, I ask that you would meet with us this morning here at First Baptist Church. Lord, I don't want to be here and you not be here. Well, I've tried to, and I will try to bring some truth from your word, but Lord, without you, I can do nothing. I need you this morning. And I don't know all of the heartaches, the struggles, the turmoils that may be in our minds this morning, but you do. And I pray that you'd meet with us, that you'd touch us, convict us, and change us. Lord, may we respond to the way we ought to this morning, and may we leave closer to you. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. Singular in power. Looking at 2021 and reflecting back on 2020. Before 2020, we didn't know the words or the little phrase COVID-19. We'd heard the word pandemic before, but now we know pandemic. We'd heard shut down before, but now we know shut down, right? I don't know of too many people who were sad to see the new year roll around to 2021. If not, it seems that there is even more rejoicing going into 2021, and yet this past little bit has been quite interesting for us, has it not? And all of this turmoil and tragedy, it is easy for us as Christians to lose focus of who is in control. 2020 was not a make it or break it year for Christians. It was a year of revealing. 2020 showed to Christians what was right here. Who was on top right here? Me or him? Who was running my life? Me or him? As we approach 2021 now inside of it. I want us with the Lord's help to focus on only God. I don't believe 2020 was all bad, though there was some tremendous tragedy. There was some heartache. There was grief. Some people still dealing with consequences and issues from things they faced in 2020. But if I can this morning in the next few weeks, as we look at Scripture, can I help us, if I can not help us, maybe just refocus a little bit. Readjust somewhat. Realign maybe our hearts and our minds and our souls back to the one who is singular in power. Psalm chapter 19 the Bible says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no 
speech nor language, where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. The Bible tells us that we can see God everywhere we go. We can see God in the trees outside, in the stars. Some words that would describe our God, splendid, elegant, mind-blowing, or truly awesome. That's our God. Words that describe His ways, powerful, personal, private, public, small, large, massive, minuscule. All things and ways that God can work and has worked from the largest, grandest uh, stroke to the most intricate, minute detail describes our God. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. You see, if we don't see the greatness of God, then all the things that money can buy and can do can be pretty enticing. If you can't see the sun, a street light looks pretty bright. Maybe when you were younger, you're able to block the sun with your thumb. Look at that. Wow. Look how big my thumb is. Bigger than the sun. If we're not careful, our perspective will limit. Our perspective will make small the God of the universe and his power. And if we approach 2021 through maybe the lens of 2020, then we will make God hidden behind a mere thumbprint and miss the grandness of our God. We ought to see from this past year that we can't control anything, truly. Little virus, smaller than the eye can see, turned the world upside down. Oh, it's a serious thing. I, I don't make light of it. I don't think it was a hoax or fake. It's a real thing. But it is not the end of the world. God is the end of the world. He'll take care of that. He has reserved that read revelation in his own power. And we have an illusion of control, an idea of control. In fact, last February and March, none of us envisioned what was coming. We had plans. We had places to go and people to see. We had a school year to finish. We had a job to go to. We had a vehicle to drive, and all of a sudden, we're at home with family. Some people didn't fare so well with family. Just is. We had a tremendous time. My family, I happen to like my wife. I hope she likes me. I still like my children, at least today. And my friend... The challenge I have for you today is to allow God's power to empower you. I brought with me this morning a set of work gloves. I'm going to put them up here so you can see them. They're nice work gloves. They're probably going to fall this morning. I had a good friend buy these for me. I tend to use these when I'm out in the yard or working in my vehicle. Nice leather, Velcro. They can do good things. We'll come back to these work gloves, but you just look at those while I preach this morning, would you? They're good work gloves, and no, you can't have them. They're mine. Little pastor's girl, wishing to speak to her, her father one day while he was in his study, ran up the stairs and found that the door was shut. She put her small hand on the doorknob and tried to turn the knob, but could not. She was not strong enough nor tall enough. Her father, hearing the doorknob and understanding what was happening, walked over to the door and gently turned it and then sat back down. His young daughter ran back in, ran into the study and said, look, Daddy, look, Daddy, I opened the door all by myself. 
never knowing the act of her father who actually turned the knob. This morning, I want to challenge us and ask us this question, what or who controls you? Who energizes you? What sustains you? Or who's in control in your life? What is the energizing force in your life? For some, it is coffee. I happen to like coffee. In fact, if you've not grabbed one yet, make sure on the way out you grab a mug from the back. Only God for our theme this year. Get one. Just a reminder, these are for coffee. Those on Facebook want to say these are for tea? God knows all <laughs> what sustains you. Now, I don't care if you drink coffee or not. I tease about that. What, what I do, I don't drink coffee every day. You're like, well, Pastor, it seems like you do. There's some days I don't drink it to make sure I'm not under the power of coffee. No, I'm, I'm not joking. I'm serious. I don't want to be addicted to coffee. And so if I get headaches, and I, and I never have. And the other day, I had no, it was a no coffee day. No headache, no nothing. And so I said, oh, you know, it's still good. I'm still going to control coffee. If it controlled me, I'd stop it. The Bible tells me not to let anything control me. But some people get up in the morning, I can't operate till I get my coffee. Guess what's energizing you? Coffee. Well, I look at my Bible, and, and that seems kind of silly, doesn't it? For other people, it's work. No, absolutely. What causes you to get out of bed in the morning? I got to go to work. Wouldn't it be silly to be energized by work? By a job? Now, we ought to work. It's scriptural and biblical, but that ought not be what drives us. For some people, it's vacation. I'm living today, I'm living tomorrow because the weekend's coming. And they're energized, they're sustained by the thought of relaxation. I hope you have a day of rest. I hope you're able to take some time and energize and spend with your family. But I pray that you don't live your life waiting for the next day of relaxation. What a shallow life that would be. For some people, it's money. A piece of paper that says one, 20, 50, or 100 on it. If I can just get a little bit more, I hope the Lord blesses you. I hope you're independently wealthy remember me but how sad to be driven by money we ought to be driven by the power of God and controlled by God look please in 2 Samuel chapter 22 where the Bible says this as for God his way is perfect God is singular in power first of all because his power is perfect that word means complete it means without blemish it means full of integrity God's way is complete. Let me say it this way. There is no shortage problems with the power of God. You're home. You click the light switch. And nothing happens. Universal response. You know what it is? You flip it again. <laughs> Try this. It, it, your power's out. You'll... Go, 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 go. Because somehow, if you flip it fast enough, all right, like right about you get the power flowing. All right, there's a flow problem. Oh no, the power's out. What do most people do after that? They go to another light switch. Brrr. Having not the ability to generate electricity that way, then they realize there's a supply problem, there's a shortage problem. We moved into this new house a couple years back now, almost two years ago, a little over two years ago now. I used to live right around the corner from the church, about three miles away. I mean, hop, skip, and a jump. When I lived at the other house, I lived within about maybe 300 feet or so of a substation, electrical substation. I never lost power. In fact, there was one day that went off in Bridgeport for about three days. Our power was off for 15 minutes that day. We didn't lose power. I moved to Morris Road, and they couldn't keep the power on over there, it seemed like. Whatever squirrel they had running and turning the thing was getting tired real quick. Over and over, power would go out. Boy, it just seemed like, it seemed like almost every week it wasn't that frequent. I don't know about you, but I've grown comfortable with electricity in my life. 
I know we're a blessed nation. I realize that. I know there are people around the world who don't have running water or electricity, but I'm sorry. I like it now. I might even be a little bit dependent upon it. I don't know. You know, judge me. Don't look at me like that because I think most of you would agree with me. You like the light to turn on. You like to open the fridge and the still be cold. You like those things to work when you come to work. You like to turn on the shower and hot water come out. We could live without it, but I've grown a little bit comfortable with it. Boy, didn't like not having power at the house. Scrounging up a generator. Figuring out cords here, there, and everywhere. Deciding what I could run and what I couldn't run. What was important. One point that first summer, it was the first or second week of July. Known in Michigan as the hottest week of the year. When we had moved into our last house, that house at that time did not have air conditioning. We had moved from a house with air conditioning to no air conditioning at that time. I told my wife then at that house before this when I said, you know, honey, this is great. We'll try it without air conditioning. I've also grown dependent upon air conditioning in my life. I'm sorry. Well, but look at that. Can I run the air conditioner? I can lose all my food, but can I have the air conditioner? <laughs> trying to figure out what to do. Well, my friend, what I'm trying to explain to you is this. That at no point in my life do I ever have a shortage of power problem with God Almighty. I don't have to decide what am I going to run. I don't have to scrounge around for a generator and some cords. I can just plug into him and all day long, all night long, all week long, all month long, all year long, he can energize me. There's a whole lot of Christians out there, though, who are tagging along with their own generator. Or saying, God, I'll plug you in when I need you, and the rest of the time, I'll run things all by myself. With God, His way is perfect. His way is complete, full of integrity, without blemish. There is no shortage problems with the power of God in your life. Whatever problem you may face, whatever situation, whatever turmoil, whatever trouble, God is able and willing and fully capable and completely capable of giving you the power to work through it. No shortage problems. You ever driven down the road? A little light comes on, and man, you decide to push the envelope? Don't. E doesn't mean empty. F doesn't mean full. E means you walk now. You push now. You are on your own now. Too many Christians are allowing their spiritual tank hit that line. With God, His way is perfect. There is no shortage problems. There is no supply problems. It's available. It's available to you. It's available to me. At times, there are Christians who believe, well, you know, pastor, that's good for you. You're the pastor, so you have the power of God. Listen, I have no more power available to me than you have to you. As a child of God, we all have the same power of Jesus Christ and God Almighty available. It's perfect. Not only is it perfect, it's proven. Look in verse 31, as for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. For who is God, save the Lord, and who is a rock, save our God. Listen, my God can solve problems. Read about the miracles in the New Testament and the wars in the Old Testament. My God can forgive sins. My God can do the impossible. And my Bible says this, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It's a proven proven, tested power. In our fears, God's power is proven. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. In our failures, God's power is proven. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us and in our frailty, God's power is proven. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. A.W. Tozer said this, God is looking for people through whom he can do the impossible. What a pity 
that we, all, that we plan only the things we can do by ourselves. I can tell you how God supplies. I can tell you how God answers prayer. I can tell you how God brings resolutions. But my friend, God's power is proven. And if you don't get to see it, it's not because God's power is not available, because he's not willing, and because he can't. God's power is proven. But lastly, God's power must be personal. Look in verse 33 of 2 Samuel 22. God is my strength and power. We can hear about the power of God. You say, amen, you look at the mountains, you look at the valleys, you look at the stars, and you're like, wow, that's powerful. God is powerful. You can hear about what God has done with someone else. You can know that he's available and that power is available for you. But you must make it personal. God's power ought to be your power and my power. It takes trust and turn. I brought these gloves with me today. These handy dandy work gloves. Nice gloves. Brand new. Never been used. Still smell like good work gloves. This glove right here, capable of protecting my hand, right? Now, work glove, pick up that plant. Pick up the plant, work glove. Move your fingers, work glove. I know what the work glove needs. It needs some discipleship. Now, work glove, here's how you pick up a plant. You move your fingers around the plant. Opposable thumb. Right? It needs to be close to the plant. Right? Pick it up. Pick it up. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to take this work glove back. It's useless. It won't even pick up a plant because it wasn't made to pick up a plant. It wasn't made to pick up a plant. And if it were to try, it'd do a poor job. It was made to be empowered. The one who can do all things Without me, ye can do nothing. But with me, all things are possible. This glove, if it could talk, could say, there's no way I can pick up that plant. Me, on the other hand, there's no way I can't pick it up. I could pick up two plants at the same time, I bet. Could I not? A whole slew of plants. I could drive a fork truck with this glove and pick up all the plants. Could I not? My friend, God has made us, created us perfectly. He's given us some tasks he wants us to do. Quit, quit, quit trying to do it yourself. God's power, which is vast, allow him to be in and through you, to control you, so that in 2021, the power of of your life is only God. Plant's not heavy if God's picking it up. What well, job's too hard if God's doing it? Let His power control you. See, so you have your glove? Or are you on the ground doing whatever? Lord, I thank you for loving us. Lord, I thank you for your mercy and your patience. Oh, God, I'd ask that you would help us to be honest this morning. Search our hearts. Lord, show us ways that we've been sustained, energized by someone or something other than you. My friend, I wonder this morning if you're here and you say, you know what, Pastor, as you spoke, God spoke to me. I've been trying to live life all on my own. Maybe I've been saved for a long time. 
You say, Pastor, would you pray for me this morning? As we come into 2021, I want only God empowering my life. I want Him inside the gloves. I want Him energizing me, His power. But say, Pastor, God spoke to me this morning. Would you pray for me that I'd let Him and His power control me? Amen. Who else? Amen. 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 I'm done. I need Him. Who else? I didn't raise my hand before. I'll raise it now. Amen. 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 In just a moment, I'll stand. The altar will be open. You come and you do business with God. And maybe you're here this morning. You've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Your foundation is not firm. It's not in Jesus Christ. My friend, that Jesus offers salvation. I wonder who would say, Pastor, would you pray for me when you pray with the others? I'm not sure I'm on my way to heaven. Would you pray for me? Just slip your hand up, slip back down, I'll see it. I'll draw no more attention to you than I did to anyone else. Amen, I see that. Who else? Lord, you've seen these hands, you know the hearts. Lord, may our hearts be turned toward you. May you control us this year. Please, God, bless his invitation. Lord, and the one who is not sure they're on their way to heaven, would they settle that question this morning? In Jesus' name, amen.